In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to carry out a hierarchical multiple regression um, utilizing four predictor variables. Um, with hierarchical multiple regression, you basically are entering a set of predictor variables in a sequence of steps. Um, and basically what, what occurs is that you uh, end up constructing a set of nested models, um, the, the, uh, the most complex being the, the final model. So to give you an illustration of what I'm talking about here, I have data uh, on a, a set of individuals, uh, basically 50 individuals. Um, I have uh, variables gender, which is dummy coded, zero for male, one for female. Subject matter interest, uh, mastery goal, and anxiety, these are all three predictor variables uh, alongside gender, but these three variables are being treated as continuous, and achievement is the uh, dependent variable in the, in the models and it is also uh, being treated as uh, a continuous variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by testing uh, uh, essentially a series of, of three models and I can specify um, these models uh, simultaneously in, in um, the SPSS program um, by entering variables in, in different blocks. So first, the first model is going to incorporate gender as a predictor of achievement the second model will incorporate gender and subject matter interest as a predictor of achievement. So in this second model, the first model is basically a simple regression. The second model, we have essentially uh, a multiple regression. So uh, the regression weights will be partial, uh, partial regression weights that we're interpreting. And then model three um, will incorporate gender, subject matter interest, mastery goals, and anxiety as predictors of achievement. And so all of these variables are uh, assumed to be uh, intercorrelated. Uh, once again, we'll be interpreting the partial regression coefficients um, uh, for, for each predictor variable. The thing to note is that um, presumably uh, when you are creating um, uh, models and testing them out in this sort of way, uh, the idea is, is that um, you know as you uh, increase uh, the number of predictors in a model, Theoretically, R square uh, would change, or the R square value would change uh, to a certain extent. Um, and so, you know, if you happen to have, let's say, an uh, increase in R square between models one and model two, that change in R square, if it's statistically significant, that would suggest then that adding in, say, subject matter interests um, helps to account for additional variation of achievement over and beyond. Uh, gender, which was uh, the lone predictor in uh, the first model. Um, if the R square changed again from model uh, two to model three, then um, <clears throat> then we we might be able to say well that uh, that mastery goals and anxiety uh, account for additional variation above and beyond gender and subject matter interests, which were uh, the lone predictors in model two. By the same token, if there was no change, let's say between model two and model three, then that would suggest then that uh, really the best fitting model uh, of these two would be model two because it's a more parsimonious model where we have gender and subject matter interest. So you can see that these are nested models. Basically model one is nested under model two uh, and model one and model two are both nested under model three. So you can see that model three is the most complex of the three models. So let's run um, our analysis, our, our hierarchical multiple regression, and look at some output. So let's go to analyze, uh, regression, and then to linear. Okay, so here, um, what I will do is I'll put achievement, uh, my dependent variable, into the dependent box. And the first uh, predictor uh, is my dummy coded gender variable, so I'm going to put it into the independence box. Now note that this, this says block one of one. So if I want to carry out model two that incorporates both gender and subject matter interests, what I need to do is click next and it will say block two of two. For this model, I will just type, I will uh, plug in subject matter interest here. And so the output for model two will incorporate subject matter interest and gender, which was presented in block one. Um, for the next uh, model, for model three, I'm now gonna add in mastery goals and anxiety. So I'm gonna move 
these two variables over to the independence box. And so in model three, the output will incorporate these two variables alongside subject matter, interest, and gender. Under statistics, I'm going to um, ask for uh, R-squared change. And I'll ask for some of the, uh, I can ask for some of the other things as well, but uh, I guess I'll go ahead and ask for confidence intervals and collinear, collinearity diagnostics, part and partial correlations uh, and descriptives. But basically, the R-squared change is uh, going to incorporate, basically it's, it's, um, it's an index of, well, you guessed it, the change in R-squared. And it's also going to have a significance test to determine if there is a significant change in R-squared from one model to the next model. So I'm going to click on continue and then on OK and we can see my output. So you can see that in the output you can see uh, in variables entered and removed you can see model one gender was entered as uh, the predictor variable. Model two subject matter interest was entered alongside gender and in model three anxiety and mastery goals were, were entered uh, alongside subject matter interest and gender. So now we have the model summary table. And so you can see model one, you can see you've got the multiple correlation R uh, and the R square value. So for model one, we had gender as the lone predictor variable. So that's denoted with the um, superscript A. And so you can see that gender accounted for about 6.5% of the variation. Basically, uh, R square is a proportion. So if you multiply that by 100%, you can express um, the variance accounted for in percentage terms. So gender was uh, um, uh, accounted for about 6.5 percent of the variation. Um, you'll also notice, uh, so when we look down at the ANOVA summary table, you have model one and this is just the model that incorporates gender only. So this significance test that you see right here is really a test of whether there's a significant um, uh, R-square value. Um, another way of thinking about that is is that is uh, to um, is that it's basically addressing is there a significant improvement in R square over a null model where basically uh, R square would be zero. So as you can see, the R square value was uh, the p value for uh, the our um, our f test uh, was um, 0 0.074, which would not be statistically significant at the conventional 0.05 level. So um, for the first model with gender, that was not um, basically a statistically significant model. Um, when we add in uh, subject matter interest, now you can see that the R-square value uh, is now 0.276. And you can see for model two that that model was statistically significant. So this model right here, this R-square value was not significant. Uh, it was 0 0.065. Model 2, uh, the R-square value was 0.276, and it was statistically significant. So what that means is, is that as a set, gender and subject matter interests were um, um, combining to account for statistically significant variation in achievement. The third model uh, incorporated uh, anxiety and mastery goals alongside gender and subject matter interests. So the R-square value actually... Uh, increases to 0.363. So that R square value is 0.363. And you can see that the test of this particular model was statistically significant as well. So what this is telling us is that as a set, all four predictors are explaining about 36.3% of the variation in achievement, and that model was statistically significant. Now, you'll see uh, as we scroll, uh, down, you can see that you've got the regression coefficients associated with each model. So model one, this is the regression coefficient for uh, gender. And uh, this, given that gender is a dummy coded variable, this would just be uh, the difference between uh, males and females in achievement levels. Um, and in fact, since females were um, coded one, uh, basically they're scoring about a little bit over four points higher on average on achievement than males. Then for model, so you can see that we have the significance test as well, uh, the uh, standardized regression weight, and, and so forth. With model two, you can see that now we have um, gender again, um, and you can see that it is not statistically significant as well. Uh, subject matter interest, however, kicks in, and um, um, you know basically 
uh, you can see that uh, this is the unstandardized regression weight, and you can see that it is statistically significant. So when we go back and we look <coughs> at model two, we again saw that the R square value was 0 0.276. Um, as a set, both predictors were uh, were accounting for significant variation. But when we unpack this a little bit further, we see that really only subject matter interest was doing uh, most of the work in terms of um, explaining variation uh, in, um, in achievement. Then when we look at model three, you can see uh, the coefficients again, and you can see that with respect to subject matter interest, um, again, it was really the lone significant predictor in the model, whereas mastery goals and anxiety were, were not significant predictors. So, um, you know, we did have an increase in R-square from model two to model three, um, with with the, um, the the combined set of predictors uh, accounting for significant variation in achievement in model three. However, again, only subject matter interests uh, accounted for uh, the only unique variation uh, in achievement. Now, it, so we want to keep in mind that uh, you know the R squared values are addressing just proportion of variation accounted for by the predictors in each of those models. But we might be interested in determining whether there is a significant change in R-square between models. So what happens when we add in uh, additional predictors? So this is where uh, this part of the uh, output comes into play, the change statistics. So the R-square change is giving you the, the uh, literal change um, in R-square values from one model to the next. So you'll see at model two, you have the R-square value equal to 0.276. The change from model one to model two in terms of R-square, I mean, it's just basically computed as taking this R-square value and subtracting this R-square value, which gets you 0.211, meaning that by adding in uh, the subject matter interest variable, we accounted for a, approximately 21.1% additional variation over the model that, um, that, that just incorporated gender. Now, is that a statistically significant amount of change? Uh, this is a p-value, and basically there's an f-test associated with this uh, r-square change value. So the p-value is 0 0.001, so we would interpret this to mean that, yes, there's a statistically significant increase in the r-square value from model one to model two. Um, um, and, there you go. So um, the next uh, uh, R-square value you see is uh, for model 3, 0.363. So if we take 0.363, subtract the 0.276, we have an R-square change associated with model 3. So basically it's a change from model 2 to model 3 of 0.086, or roughly 8.6% uh, ad additional variation accounted for by adding in the set of anxiety and mastery goal variables. Was this a statistically significant change? Uh, you know, at the conventional 0.05 level, we would say not. We would say it's not a significant uh, change. Nevertheless, uh, we, we you know we can still say that as a set, you know, these variables did account for uh, statistically significant variation in achievement. Now, you might be confused a little bit by this first R-square change. You have the 0 0.065, and this value is equal to the R-square value that you have right here in the model summary table. And basically, this is a change over a null model. So uh, if you think about a, a, a model zero, if you will, where the predictors are accounting for zero variation or zero per percent of variation, then the change uh, would could be just computed as uh, 0 0.065 minus zero, which would obviously give you a change of 0 0.065. And so the um, the um, this value right here will equal the R square uh, value for model one, and then the uh, p value associated with the ANOVA for this change is actually going to equal the p value uh, here. So uh, in a nutshell, all these values in row one are going to equal this are, are going to be the same values that you see in the model one uh, ANOVA summary table.